I'm learning history in Cleveland, Tennessee. Oh, Coe is a society. Five Points Museum. Hey guys, and welcome back to The Curious Curators. I'm Hope. And I'm Lindsay. And today we are going to be talking about a Tennessee boy. I wasn't supposed <laughs> to say it quite like that, but that is going to be Davy Crockett. So you might be wondering, why are you talking about Davy Crockett? <laughs> yeah, because I actually thought he was a fictional character. Thank you, Disney. So Davy Crockett was real, and he was from East Tennessee. And here's a fun fact. Um, when we were asking about what we should do on Facebook, my half-sister told me that her mom was distantly related to Davy Crockett. So really, we're keeping it all in the family here. Is that like being related to Pocahontas? I don't know. She's I don't pretty know. prolific if all the people who say they're related to her actually are. Well, my mom's big into genealogy, so I'll get her to look it up. There you go. That's her project. Well, we'll, we'll be back with more information on that after my mom has a chance to look it up. So I, I grew up in Ohio, so I didn't really hear about Davy Crockett at all. That's why the only context I had for Davy Crockett was Walt Disney. Well, um, but in, in elementary schools in Tennessee, you know, he's one of the folk heroes people talk about. See, I actually didn't know Davy Crockett from, like, folk hero -ness, I guess. I knew him from the Alamo. Right, because you are quite interested in the Alamo. I am quite interested in the Alamo. Um, you would think that I would have been there by now, but I have never been to the oh. Alamo. Um, field trip <laughs> all the way to Texas. But, yes, so Davy Crockett was from Tennessee, from East Tennessee, and he was actually, like, a U.S. representative from yeah. Tennessee. He was born in North Northeast Tennessee, like on the Virginia border. So yes, he was born not really right here, but he was... He was know, born in Limestone, Tennessee, which is near Johnson City. Yeah, so it's in a big part of like the folklore of Tennessee. I think he was kind of called the king of the wild frontier. Like, was he? What a name, right? <laughs> I only heard gentleman of the cane. Which I thought was like in reference to maybe him carrying a cane or being like a very authoritarian parent or teacher. But no, it's the canes, like the, the woods. It was a reference to him oh. being backwoods. It was a snarky thing people called him in oh. Congress. Well, because like I think when you think of Davy Crockett or if you've ever seen the Disney show, which I have not, um, he's always wearing like those buckskin clothes and like a coonskin, coonskin cap. cap. And carrying like a long rifle. So Davy Crockett was born in Limestone, Tennessee on August 17th, 1786. And he was one of nine children. Um, and his parents were so poor that they often hired him out to pay off their debts. Um, and they moved around a lot. And this was kind of this transient lifestyle that he started life with. And he had no formal education, so he kind of had to learn to be a woodsman, a scout. He was basically a frontiersman. Yes. They said he was quite famous for, like, storytelling and stuff. Like, he was well known oh, yeah. for yeah. his storytelling, like, quite early on. But, so, he is, like, a rags to riches story in that he, like, went on to be um, in the House of Representatives and everything. So, there's that. Yeah, he did have some businesses, I think, later in yeah. life that he lost to a flood, but... He remained quite, <laughs> um, he remained quite poor, though. Yeah. He never, um, like, achieved riches. Yeah. Um, like, some people, you know, like, some people are able to build themselves up and, like, be loaded with no money. And that was not Davy Crockett. Poor guy. So I read that he was jilted by his first fiance. Mm. It didn't really clarify what that meant. She left. She was like, I'm not going to marry you. Sorry, Like, bye. did she leave him at the altar? Or did she throw the ring in his face? Or maybe he didn't get her a big enough ring because he was so poor. This would have been a great movie to watch, I think. Right. Um, but then he married Mary Polly Finley um, when he was 20. Well, he was just a few days shy of his 20th birthday. Um, and they had three children and moved to Franklin County, Tennessee. Okay. And is that when he started his political career? Um, he actually started his political career a little bit later. Um, this, at this time, he was joining the, in 1813, he joined the Tennessee Militia. Oh, um, okay. So and he, he fought the Creeks. Yeah, in the Creek Wars. Um, yeah, so this was during his military career. So that was with, he was with Andrew Jackson at that time? Yes, yes. During the War of 1812, he was with Andrew Jackson in Spanish Florida to help fight uh, and clear the British forces from Spanish Florida. And a lot of this actually kind of goes into, like, the mythology of Davy Crockett. Yeah. You know, um, that he... <laughs> I was reading that a lot of people say that he single-handedly fought the Creek Nation. And I'm like, sir, 
That was not true. And like everywhere debunks that very quickly. Like he was not even really like a fighter. He was like a hunter and a scout. He was part of a uh, massacre of yeah of creeks. Yes. Yes. They um, call that a battle, but like. I'm using air quotes for the word battle because it was not a battle. It was a massacre. Yeah, apparently it was in retaliation from the Creeks attacking Fort Mims. And he was he was a part of that. Yeah. Well, so he did that. And later they said that he was a proponent of Native American rights. That would be something that people... And he talk- was an opponent of Andrew Jackson later. Yes, and he was um, very anti-Indian Removal Act. Mm-hmm. Um, but... So change of heart, maybe? Yeah, or he was a soldier for the money. Like, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say like a mercenary or anything like that. but I like guess war is different than, than, yeah, I mean. Civilian life. Right. And he didn't, like, realistically, I wouldn't say he really got much done when he was in Washington. <laughs> I mean, that sounds awful to say, but, like, it's he didn't get that much done. Well, and compared to the mythology and the legends that surround him, too, he was actually really quite a boring guy. Yeah, like, I... And he even said that himself. He went on a tour to try to tell people because in, I think it was 1831, um, let me see, let me make sure I get this right, uh, The Lion of the West was a play that was put on in New York City, um, and it kind of exaggerated the accounts of his life, so he went on a PR tour afterwards to tell people that his life was not that exciting and he was not this legend. Like, I would have taken it and run with it. Davy Crockett did not... He wouldn't have had to go to Texas or anything else. He could have made money just like that. <laughs> Should have been your media girl, Mr. Crockett. Um, so, clearly I've said he went to Texas. So, eventually he stopped being elected for the Senate. He lost an election. He, he was elected on and off, too, yeah. throughout those years. So he was part of the militia-fighting War of 1812, um, and eventually he remarried when his wife died, had more children with a widow, um, and she had children that she brought into the marriage as well. They ended up with, like, eight children. And he went into business and then the legislature. Um, he was a commissioner for his county, Lawrence County. Um, he became a justice of the peace. Um, for, and he was on the Tennessee General Assembly a few times for a few different counties. Um, Very busy. Yes, and he actually lost his um, businesses to floods at a point in his life, and then he moved and joined the Tennessee General Assembly again, representing Carroll County. Um, but he ran in 1827. In 1829, he won the House of Representatives uh, seat. In 1830, he lost. In 1833, he won. In 1834, he lost again. So he he had a very spotty political career, but he definitely had a significant political career after he, you know, put down his rifle essentially yeah. for a while. Well, and him losing in 1834 would kind of be a catalyst for what happened next in his life, which is, so I thought wrongly that Davy Crockett went to Texas because he was going to fight for independence for Texas. That's what I always thought. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not true. Basically, he was one of the people who would move west uh, in order to find better land for themselves. So he decided that Texas would be his next stop. And he famously said, like, talking to his constituents, you may go to hell and I will go to Texas. I'm like, okay. So that's exactly what he did. He moved to Texas. Um, So he started heading that way in November of... 1835, and he kind of gave speeches along the way. So, like, he was still on yeah, the and PR he, train. Yeah, and he gave that quote after he lost. Yeah, so it wasn't like... So the full quote was like, I told the people of my district yeah. that I would serve them faithfully as I had done. But if not... You may go to hell and I will go to Texas. Yes. So... It's kind of a bitter goodbye. <laughs> I know, like, not gracefully losing No, all. that was... You know, I'm out. Yeah. Peace. So basically, he ended up in Texas in early 1836. In January, he arrived in Nacogdoches, which is like quite east Texas. And he signed an oath along with 65 other men on the 14th of January. And this oath said, I have taken the oath of government and have enrolled my name as a volunteer and will set out for the Rio Grande in a few days with the volunteers from the United States. 
So he, you know, was volunteering to go fight in the Texas Revolution. And what you got as, like, payment was 4,600 acres of land. Which, I mean, Texas is quite large, so that's... Good ranch land. So he ended up in San Antonio on February 6th. So, honestly, if he had moved, like, a little bit slower, he could have missed the Alamo. And Davy Crockett would probably be a name that was forgotten quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, But he arrived at the Alamo mission on February 8th. And then on February 23rd, the Mexican army led by General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana came into um, San Antonio and they immediately started a siege on the building, which we all know is the Battle of the Alamo. Mm -hmm. And this lasted until March 6th. The Mexican army attacked just before dawn and they killed all of the defenders. They were able to keep up like under siege for 13 days though with just yeah. 200 volunteers yeah so and there's that's that famous thing um where they drew a line in the sand and said like if you're not brave enough to fight for texas or whatever go and no one crossed the line <laughs> um but the battle itself only lasted about 90 minutes all 200 defenders were killed um and since no one survived we don't actually know well i mean the, the Mexican army survived, but you know, we don't actually know about Davy Crockett's last minutes, but we do know that at age 49, he died in the Alamo. But there is like a rumor um, that started circulating a few months later that Davy Crockett had survived the initial battle along with a couple others, maybe about six, mm-hmm. and they all tried to surrender and they were killed anyway. Okay. So, I mean, we don't know that for sure. But that's a very sad end, isn't it? Yeah. For that 4,600 acres. Yeah. For 200 of them. So there were also, like, Jim Bowie was there, the one who created the Bowie knife. Bowie, Bowie, I don't know. Bowie. Bowie. So he was also there. He also died at the Alamo. But it was, I mean, so I guess he would, like, become, like, that hero after this. But, I mean, really, it wasn't until, like, 1954, 1955 that he really became something of a household name, I think, with, like, Disney. Right. But, I mean, even during his life, he was being memorialized and put on a pedestal in really weird ways. Yeah. Like, he was still alive. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, like, why you would think... I guess maybe it's, like, the influencer type thing that happens today. Like, you know, that happens to people today, but we just don't hear about it happening very often. 1831 (laughs) celebrities. Yeah, like... People for, magazine instead of you know that they instead of tabloids they had yeah plays they're in plays like on Broadway about Davy Crockett the frontiersman um, he there was actually like a myth that he could shoot a bullet at a tree hit an axe and like split the bullet mm-hmm. which seems like a how would you figure that out <laughs> I don't know but apparently MythBusters tried it in two thousand nine and it was confirmed that you could do that okay so. Like, that part of the Davy Crockett myth is apparently true. Not well, that... it's possible. It could right, be true. Right, it's possible. But how would you make that up if, like, you hadn't seen someone do it before? That is not what I would choose to make up, personally. Well, I mean, at least it is plausible. But you're right. In 1954, Disney came out with the Davy Crockett TV series. Yes. Which was where my context came from, not as a Tennessee girl. <laughs> not um, a t- I just knew from the Alamo. And then 1960, uh, in the Alamo, John Wayne played Davy Crockett. I've never seen it. I have have never seen a John Wayne movie. But my my grandpa, he was was a John Wayne aficionado. So, you know, he probably had that. Maybe one day we can bring back historically inaccurate movies and watch Watch the Alamo. I've never seen a John Wayne movie. That'll be my first one. That would be my first one, too. We are awful like you know i feel like that i I feel feel very millennial all of a sudden i know i feel like that's something that a lot of people when i was at home last time i stepped i was like that's john wayne and i was like and i just went in the other room because i was like i don't like westerns i don't think people who listen to the podcast will understand that you did a an awkward thumbs up (laughs) that's true she did an awkward thumbs up that's the story of my life but that's probably that's all i have for davy crockett what about you yeah um Definitely a man who kind of fell short of legend, but even he said he didn't, he was 
Yeah. Well, not as great as they said he was. Well, that's interesting that he said that when people like George Washington take it and they're like, yeah. They run with it. I told the, I told the truth about the cherry tree. And I'm Davy just, Crockett's I'm like, just continuing Davy Crockett's legacy. <laughs> he was going around going, no, don't say that. Don't. I'm not, a, I'm not that guy. I'm not a legend. Uh, this is mythological. This is exaggeration. This is not true. So I'm just carrying on that tradition to help Davy Crockett's good name because he really was was kind of not not having that. He's much more honest. Exaltation. I think of much him. more honest than most people because oh, I yeah. would have taken it and run with it. Sorry. <laughs> like, well, I mean, if you're a politician, that's what you do. I mean, that's true. But. Well, I was thinking of like Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. Oh, yeah. You know, the cherry tree and I cannot tell a lie. True. You take be- it and run with it. Yeah. That becomes your campaign almost. Well, he could have gotten reelected maybe if he had taken up the. <laughs> well, no, that's what's funny though. I wrestled though. a bear. I he killed a bear at age three, which is literally in my notes, and there's no record of that. But that's part of like the myth of Davy Crockett. But so. no, he literally lost the seat after he went on that PR tour. The same year. I hope he fired his PR He person. won in 1933, and he went on that PR tour, and he lost in, 19, in 1834. 1833, 1834. He should have fired that PR person, honestly. I sincerely doubt Davy Crockett one. had a PR person. Well, that is all we have about Davy Crockett. That is all today. we have about Davy Crockett. We could rant for hours, but we won't. Trying to give his legacy what he would have really <laughs> wanted. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.